All right, everybody. Uh, we are honored for our next guest, a friend uh, of mine that I've known for years, who is absolutely the nation's premier expert. Uh, as he says in his presentation, building long-term cash flow with the no equity, no stress, I call it no stress, no rehab system in a lot of cases for the most part, but so honored to have uh, my friend Bill Twyford joining us here on Note Camp 2021. You're going to want to grab a pen and paper, take some notes. We'll save your questions to the very end, but prepare. This is going to be one of the most important strategies besides buying non-performing notes. This is another great strategy to take advantage of where the market's at right now. So, Bill, take it away, my friend. Well, I appreciate that, Scott. Thank you very, very much. Um, we're going to have fun here. I got to tell you what. Uh, a lot of people call me the real estate rock star because of the way I dress and my long hair and all that stuff. And here I am. Let me let me cover this first. My wife the other day says to me on Thursday, she goes, hey, would you drive me to the dermatologist? I said, sure, no problem. So we're down in Florida, our house in Florida in Delray Beach. So I drive over to the dermatologist and I'm just sitting there. They go, Bill, come on back. And I'm thinking for what? So I go back there and she's having me checked for melanoma and all that kind of stuff. So they go, oh, we're going to freeze this. We're going to freeze that. We're going to freeze this. We're going to freeze that. I'm just like, well, what are we doing? I didn't know I had an appointment. And they go, no, no, no. We're taking care of all this stuff for you. And I'm like, okay. So I look at Dwan and I go, listen, I have to speak on Saturday. So if you look close at me, it looks like somebody shot me in the face with buckshot. It's because they did all of, you know, this work on my face. And they said, now listen, you can't put any base on, you can't do anything for when you speak. Because when we speak, a lot of times, you know, we're doing webinars, we'll put on some base or something like that. But I got to tell you what, it's just, uh, I'm so, what you're seeing right now is a raw me, man. I'm telling you, real raw. So at least I've got all my teeth there and look at See, I got all of my teeth. So I do have that going for me. All right, so we're gonna talk, we're gonna have fun. I gotta tell you what, this is all about having fun. And I've probably done four to 5,000 presentations in my career. So I'm a professional national speaker. We do our own two-day workshops for closure, uh, workshops for closure summit, investor summits, cash and flash um, investor summits. And we've got a lot of stuff going. I've known Scott for a long time. Scott and I, we met at the Fest Parker out at uh, Realty 411. Oh, God, years back. And he and I became good buddies and, and stuff like that. And we've stayed in touch over the years. I love the note buying that he does. Um, I definitely, definitely love note buying. And uh, it's, it, it's, it's fun to create notes. So we're going to talk today about no equity equals big profits, building long-term cash flow with a no equity system. Okay, so I want you guys to understand, we're gonna cover a lot of stuff here. I've got about an hour and 15 minutes to cover about three hours worth of stuff. So I want you to take some notes. I mean, I don't have you guys on the side to answer questions and, and stuff like that, but I will here. Let me look and see if I can no, I'm not going to mess with that because I'll mess up the whole presentation. So let's just get started here on what we've got. What are we going to learn in this session that we talk about today? Because I know Scott's got stuff going on from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And tomorrow, you don't want to miss my wife. She's going to be on there, Dewan Bent Twyford, tomorrow. I don't know what time, but she'll be on tomorrow. So what are we going to learn in this session? We're going to talk about adjustable rate mortgages versus fixed rate mortgages. We're gonna talk about mortgages with higher interest rates. We're also gonna talk about what paperwork do you need and how to build long-term wealth with no equity deals. Now, I wanna make sure everybody can see my screen. I wanna make sure everybody can see my screen. Scott, everybody can see my Looks screen. Looks good, yes sir, you're good, you're golden. We're good. Okay, we're also gonna talk about terms. Let me give you an example. I've got a piece of property, 369 feet of oceanfront property in Malibu, California. It's got a 4,500 square foot house on it. It's worth $11 million. Okay. I'm willing to sell it for $15 million. How many takers do I have? 
you know, who wants to buy $11 million house for 15 million bucks? Not many people. How about if I said, hey, listen, all I want is $1,000 down and $1,000 a month. How many people now want it? They go 369 feet of oceanfront property, the 4,500 square foot house in Malibu, California. I'll take that all day long for a thousand bucks a month. So the people we're dealing with here only care about two things. Our buyers only care about two things, how much money down and how much money per month. They don't care about purchase price. They don't care about interest rate. They don't care about any of that stuff. They only care about, can I make the down payment and can I make the monthly payment? That's all they care about. So you can sell these $200,000 houses for 220, 230 owner finance because you're offering easy terms. Just like I can sell my $11 million estate for $15 million because I'm offering terms. Okay, so I got, once you guys understand that, there's three profit centers. There's three profit centers in doing no equity deals. We front load the deal with profits. So we make today cash. And then we have a deferred profit that comes in whether we get out of bed or not every day. And then we have a back end profit on these deals. So write that down. You got three profit centers. You front load the deal with profit. You get a deferred profit every month from the note you create. And then you do a back in profit when they refinance you out of this transaction. Okay. Sometimes we're going to shorten the term of the note up. And sometimes we're going to stretch the term of the note out. Okay. So it just depends on what's going on. And we'll talk about those today too. All right. So let's look at, let's look at this prospecting and finding deals. This is the heartbeat of your business. It truly is. Okay. Whether it's internet marketing, bandit signs, face-to-face -face communications or target mailings. I'm not a huge mailer. Okay. I'm not a huge mailer when it comes to mailing. If you ask me about internet marketing, I can't tell you anything about internet marketing. I don't really do that. I specialize in face-to-face -face negotiations. Okay. I'm good one-on-one -on -one with people. I'm good in a group of people. That's where I specialize. So I hire people to do the internet marketing. I hire people to get my bandit signs out. And if I did any mailings, which I don't, because I'm a firm believer in you have active marketing and you have passive marketing. Passive marketing is when you're waiting for something to happen. Active marketing is where you make shit happen. Okay. You chase the business success in business. Write this down. Success in business is when you chase the business and don't wait for it. Success in business is when you chase the business and you don't wait for it. If you're waiting for the business, you're waiting for something to happen. While you're waiting for something to happen, I'm creating something to happen by getting on the phone, talking to people, getting, going to people's houses, meeting with them face to face, whether it's working out a modification on a note that I purchased, or if it's a foreclosure I'm dealing with, or if it's a subject to I'm dealing with, whatever it is. Okay. Because you have to have multiple streams of exit strategies. So no lead falls behind. Okay, it's real important guys and gals that no lead falls behind you. If, if you just do wholesaling and you run into a deal where it's a $300,000 house, they owe 295,000. You're like, I can't do anything with this. Well, there could be 50 to $70,000 in profit in that deal. If you knew this exit strategy, but since you don't know this exit strategy, you walk away from that deal. When you walk away from that deal, somebody like me, gets that deal. And I make 50, 60, $70,000 on it. Okay. Same things happen when you start chasing all the high equity deals. Everybody's chasing all the high equity deals. Everybody's chasing the 300,000 our houses where the homeowner owes 150 and they're going to sale in three weeks. Everybody's chasing those deals. That's why there's so much competition, but you get the 300,000 our house where the homeowner owes 295. That's going to sale in three weeks. Nobody's chasing that person. 
Nobody's chasing Bob and Mary Smith on that deal. Okay. And you're the only person chasing that because you understand the strategies that you can utilize in this business. Okay. That's why it's so important to really understand these strategies. You must fill your funnel with leads. Gary Prescott's one of my students, been one of our students since 2003. Makes about 2.6 million bucks a year. He's got 75 to 80 leads in his funnel every single day. He says every quarter he cleans out about 40 leads that close. And then he gets more new ones in there. It's just a revolving door is what it is. They're constantly prospecting to put deals in your funnel. It's important you do that. So do some of each but also find out where your talent is. Because like it says in the book, Traction, you have to be working an area of business that you're good at. If you're put in a situation where you can't do it and you won't do it, you're gonna find out that it's more work than you really want and you'll sooner or later will quit. So find out what you're good at. I know I'm not good at internet marketing. I hire it out. I know I'm not good at going out and putting bandit signs out. So I go ahead, hire it out. I'm good at getting on the phone, talking to people and making stuff happen. Okay, that's what I'm good at. Okay, other ways of finding deals. Late leads. You got people that are 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days late on their mortgage. Their mortgage lates are what they are. People that are behind on their mortgage. We buy them from a company out of California. I gotta buy 5,000 at a time, okay? And these leads, we buy 5,000 at a time, but they get them directly from the credit bureau. People, their mortgage late leads is what they are. Lenders can get those. A lot of lenders don't do it, but lenders can get those. I have a hard money lending company, so I have the right to get those from this company. Uh, they're $500 for 500 leads. You can just email me there. I'm the last guy, I guess, on AOL. Bill Twyford at AOL.com. I need 12 zip codes. Get you 500 leads of people that are late. So write that email down, BillTwyford at AOL.com. Like I said, I'm the last guy on AOL. I think when I leave AOL, I've been with them since 99, they're going to shut the doors. All right, real quick, my story, who I am. I'm 63 years old. I've been in business for 40 years this year. I've got 14 different businesses right now. And I knew as a kid, when I was 13 years old, I told my dad he was working a job and we were painting houses at night. I said, dad, we make more money painting houses at night than you do working all day at this job. I said, why don't we, why don't you just quit your job and start your own business? He goes, oh, I can't do that. He goes, if I do that, he goes, I don't have my insurance. I don't have, you know, this, I don't have the security of a check every week. I said, well, you just create a check every week. Go out, we'll talk to, we says, I said, we can just go through town and just go out and knock on everybody's door and see, here I'm 13 years old. I said, we can knock on everybody's door and see if they want their house paid. Now that's the mindset of me at 13. So I knew, I told him, I said, listen, when I, you know, get old enough, I'm gonna have my own business. So at 23, I moved from a little town in Iowa to Houston, Texas, and I started the painting business down there. Okay. Now here in 19, this is in 1982, 1993, we're doing a, a, a 2 million gallon inside of a 2 million gallon tank for Arco chemical. And what had happened is I couldn't pass the respirator test where they fit you for a respirator. And then you have to blow into a tube for a long period of time. I had lung damage. So they said, you need to go see a doctor and see what's going on. So I went to go see a doctor and the doctor says, he goes, well, you've got some lung damage. He goes, you can't pass the test. He says, are you a smoker? I said, no, I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. I said, I've never taken drugs. I've never been drunk, which is still, you know, true today. I might look like I take drugs, but I, I never done any of that stuff. And yes, I live in Colorado where all the pot is, but I just don't do that stuff. I've always worked. Okay. So my whole thing was I've just been clean the whole time, but the chemicals and stuff that I was around had damaged my lungs. So I sold my painting business, moved to Colorado, took about two months off and thought, gosh, what am I going to do? And my mother-in-law from my first wife had said, you ought to sell something expensive because you can sell ice to Eskimos. And I said, well, said, I've always loved real estate. 
So I got the real estate business. 1994, I got my real estate agent license. Two weeks in the business, my broker hands me these, these little cassettes and says, you remind me of this person. He said, you need to go to his workshop. So I went to his workshop. His name was Mike Ferry. And I told him, I said, I want to sell a hundred houses a year because I walk into a real estate office early 1994. And I met this real estate agent that had his feet up on the desk and he was watching TV in the middle of the day. And I said to him, I go, is this what you do all day long? And he goes, yeah. I said, I just wait for people to come in. He says, how can I help you? And I said, well, I'm looking to buy some land to build a house. Cause I had about 300,000 bucks with me from selling my painting business. And he says to me, he goes, oh, he's hands me an MLS book. He goes, here's an MLS book. The land listings are in the back. If you see something you like, let me know. I'll take it out and show it to you. I said, this is what you do all day long? He says, yeah. He says, how many houses a year do you sell? He says, 10 or 12. I said, how much you make on each, you know, house? He goes, oh, six, 7,000 bucks. I'm thinking, okay, this guy's making 50, 60, 70,000 bucks a year watching the Hornstones. Well, I'm used to making a couple hundred thousand bucks a year with my painting business back in, you know, in the, in the 1980s, which was a hell of a lot of money back then. So I said to him, what would happen if you sold a hundred houses a year? Look at the money you'd make. He said, oh, you don't want to do that. That's too much work. And I thought to myself, this is what I want to do. So I went ahead, got my real estate license, my broker's license, went to school 31 days to get my broker's license. And then when I interviewed at Coal Banker, with Don LaFaber in Evergreen, Colorado, he said, why should I hire you? I said, because I'm gonna be your number one agent. I'm gonna get on the telephone, I'm gonna prospect, I'm gonna chase expired listings, I'm gonna chase, you know, just listed, just sold, and I'm gonna go ahead and call for sale by owners, and I'm gonna cold call. He said, well, you sound interesting. Then he hands me these tapes. He said, you sound like this guy, it happened to be Mike Ferry. So when I met Mike, I told him, I said, I want to sell a hundred houses a year. He says, you know what it takes to do that? I said, I have no idea, but I'm hiring you to do it. So I spent $16,000 in 1994 to hire a mentor so I could reach my goals. Well, my first year in the business, I sold 79 homes. I was working only Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, because remember I was building a house. I bought some land and I was building a house. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I was working with my contractors. Okay, so my first year I sold 79 homes working four days a week. Second year, 123. Next year, 178. Next year, 194. I sold 574 homes in four years. Okay, as an agent. As an investor in 1998, I went out, I knew how to write these down. There's four things you got to do to be successful in any business. I don't care if it's a note business, if you're selling windows, if you're selling shingles, or if you're selling siding, whatever it is you're selling. You have to prospect to find new business all the time. So you have to prospect to find new business. You have to qualify your customers. You have to do effective lead follow-up. Write that down. Effective lead follow-up. That's the downfall of all real estate investors. They don't follow up. And then you got to learn how to negotiate and close. So prospect, qualify, electively follow up, and then close and learn how to negotiate. You do those four things, you master those four skills, and you'll make six, eight hundred million dollars a year in real estate investing or any type of business you're in. But as an investor, I knew how to do those four things. As an agent, I knew how to do those four things. So my first year in the business, as an investor, I flipped 80 houses my first year in the business. Okay, now you may think that's a lot of houses. It is, but you know what? I was prospecting, I was chasing foreclosures, and I was doing deals is what I was doing. Okay, I started teaching in 2003. Last year, we closed 49 deals in Colorado, Florida, Ohio, Iowa, and Texas. To date, I've done 1,095 investor deals that are not, those are not counting the 1994, you know, my real estate agent deals. And so those are investor deals. And I've door knocked over 50,000 doors, have over 300,000 phone contacts. There's my family right there. You notice I, I also co-authored a book with Dan Kennedy called Stand Apart. And in 1999, I was a world championship. I was world champion in Taekwondo and fighting. I'm a second degree black belt, 2000, 2001, 2002. 
the Colorado State champion in fighting. So I love martial arts. It's, it, it's fun for me. It's good exercise. Okay, so write this down. Here's your seven keys to your no equity deals. So I just wanted to share with you a little bit about who I am because most people on here have no idea who I am. You might not have ever heard of me before, but I am a guru, not a guru. So I'm a guy out doing deals and also teaching people how to do it. And people say to me all the time, they go, well, if you're making so much money, why are you out teaching? Well, I got to tell you what, if I had all the money in the world, I'd be doing exactly what I'm doing because I love what I'm doing. I love doing workshops. I love meeting people. I love training people. I love coming to people's houses and taking them out in the streets for two days and working with them one-on-one -on -one and building their business to where their business revolves around what they want and how they can build a predictable, duplicatable, self-sustainable business anywhere in the country. That's what I specialize in. Okay, so the seven keys to a no equity deal, write these down. Equity. What is the value versus what is owed? How much is your monthly payment? Okay, how much is the monthly payment on the property? Okay, and let me explain to you what a subject to is. A subject to is getting a property. You're taking control of a property subject to the existing mortgage that's in place. Bob and Mary Smith are six payments behind. They just want out of their house. They owe 250,000, it's worth 260. They can't list it with an agent. They're five payments behind at 1500 a month, let's say. Okay, I come in, give them $1,000. They deed me the property. I leave their loan in place. I make up their five payments of $1,500, which is $7,500. And now I take it out of the foreclosure process by doing that. I rent it out for 2000 a month. I make $500 a month positive cash flow. That's taking a property subject to the existing mortgage. In real estate, you have two sides of a real estate deal. One side is ownership. The other side is debt. I can be the owner and you can be on the debt. Okay. Real simple, not hard to do, not hard to figure out. So I wanna know how much equity, what's the value versus what's owed. Payment, how much is your monthly payment? How many back payments are you behind? Okay, how many back payments are you behind? What will the house rent for? If I took the house as a buy and hold and kept it for 10 years, what can I rent it for? Okay, what does the house need for rehab? What does the house need for rehab? Okay, how much does it need? Because, and I always tell the homeowner this, you know, if you were gonna keep the house, Bob and Mary, what would you guys do to it? They go, well, you know, we definitely needs a new roof because we got a couple small leaks here and we've been talking about getting a new roof on this house for the last two years. So now right away, I know it needs a new roof because he told me it does. He's got some leaks. And then I can walk through and see that it needs updating, paint, carpet, things like that. I can walk around the outside, look at the foundation, see if there's any settling issues or any foundation problems. Okay, I can peek up in the attic and just see what the structure looks like. It's not that hard to do once you know how to do it. Okay, homeowner's motivation. What's the homeowner's motivation to move out, sign documents, and get cash? In land trust, we put the property in a land trust is what we do. Okay, we deed it from Bob and Mary Smith to the Smith Family Land Trust. Okay, and just leave it at that. Put down our, our LLC as the beneficiaries of the land trust. And I'll have Gary Prescott or, or Victoria, one of our other students. I'll have one of our students become the trustee or I'll have our attorney become the trustee. You know, so we structure these deals. Now, what's the most important one here? Think about that for a second. It's the homeowner's motivation, guys. Because when you have a homeowner that has a 300,000 house and they owe 150 on it, everybody's chasing that deal. 
if everybody's chasing that deal, what does the homeowner have? The homeowner has choice because they've got 10 different investors chasing them. They have choice, just like our homeowners have right now in a market that's going like this. And the market's getting ready to crest and turn and go into another stage. You're gonna see that it's happening all over the country. Here's the thing you have to look at. When a market's going up like this, homeowners don't have the motivation just to take less than what's owed or, or less than the amount that it's valued at, okay? Because they can list it with an agent and get five or six offers in one day, okay? But the homeowner's motivation is so critical because when you're dealing with people that have no equity, what you're gonna find out is that these people don't have any choice. They need to work with somebody. They're gonna lose their house in three weeks. They've got no equity in their property. They can't list it with an agent and sell it because they owe too much. Now, ultimately what happens here is they're willing to work with you. But I have to have them making sure that they are going in and doing what I need them to do, signing what I need them to sign, so we can move forward on this transaction because without the homeowner's motivation you're going to be beating your head against the wall now here's the entrance to a modification script so let's just say you're at the door and you're talking to a homeowner in foreclosure okay you always agree with the homeowner first well you know what i wouldn't do that and i would say back to the homeowner i'm with you you know what if i was you i probably wouldn't do that either it's easier to get people to agree with you when you agree with them first. Okay, so now let's look at this script. Let me just say it before I put it up there. Hi, my name is Bill. Is at the courthouse here today. I know you have a pending problem with the property, which means you'd be one, two, or three payments behind. We specialize in helping homeowners buy time to stay in their home. What I'd like to do is give you this free information packet that gives you your 10 options of what you can do to buy time. What are you working on right now with your mortgage company? Okay, all that is is an entrance to a modification conversation because most of the people you talk to that are behind in payments want to do a modification. Okay, so there you go. If they're late on their mortgage, but not a public record, this is your 30, 60, 90, 120 day late leads. See, my name is Bill. I was at the courthouse here today. I know you have a pending problem with your property, which means you're one, two, or three payments behind. We specialize in helping homeowners buy time to stay in their house. We'd like to give this free information package your 10 options on what you can do to buy time to stay in your home. Let me ask you this, what are you working on right now with your mortgage company? Just a simple script. You all have scripts. So if you're working for closures, record what you're saying and listen back to it. Okay, because what you're gonna find out if you're talking to people about buying their house, nine out of 10 people are gonna shut the door because I'm not talking about buying their house. I'm talking about buying them time. I'm establishing value at the door. I'm establishing value over the phone. I'm establishing value in my mailings by giving them options and giving them information nobody else is giving them versus I buy houses cash, okay? Because nine out of 10 people don't wanna sell their house. One out of 10 do. It's great when you find the one out of 10 but you're walking past the other nine that might just need a little cultivating and probably half of those will have to sell their house because their modifications won't work. Okay. Or they won't qualify for a modification. So what you got to do is learn what to say to get people to engage with you to where you can walk them down the path. They need to go down to where it feels like it's their idea of having this conversation. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, now, let's look at this case study here. Is it a deal or no deal? House is worth 210,000. Homeowner owes 205. Fixed interest rate is 6.75%. Monthly payments are $1,300 a month. Payments behind are four. $5,200 is what the total payments behind are. Okay. That's four times 1300. 
We can sell it per month or rent it if we keep it long term for about $1,640 a month in this area. Okay, homeowner wants $1,000. Now, how much equity do they have? Zero. Okay, it looks like $5,000 on paperwork, but if they sold it and had to go to a, a regular closing, they're going to have prorations on taxes, they're going to have closing costs, they're going to have title insurance. And all that's going to eat up their money. So they're happy with just a thousand bucks. Homeowners will to sign everything. Anything you put in front of them, they'll sign. Is there any money in this deal? Well, let's look. Take a picture of that if you want. So you can look back at it when we start going through this. Okay, before I go on. We structured the buying end. We bought it for 205 because that's what's owed on it plus the back payments of 5200 homeowner gets 1000 our total purchase price was 211 200 what's it worth 210 what do we have in it 211 200 doesn't sound like we're making money on this deal at all looks like a dead deal to 95% of or 98% of investors homeowner signs everything over to us Purchase versus value. Let's talk about that for a second. The purchase price versus the value, I really don't care about that when the terms work. Sure, I want it within a certain range, but if I'm buying a house that's worth 210 for 211, 200, the value is 210, I'm buying it for 211, 200, doesn't sound or look good on paper. However, when you structure the selling end of this, you'll see where it makes a lot of sense. So I don't really care about the purchase price versus the value. Remember my 369 feet of oceanfront property in Malibu? $11 million it's worth, I'm selling it for 15 million. I'm selling it for 15 million because I'm offering easy terms, thousand dollars down, thousand bucks a month. Okay, so same thing here. What about price versus terms? When I'm buying it, I'm looking at purchase versus value. When I'm selling it, I'm looking price versus terms. So I'm creating a note here. It's all about how much can I sell it for if I'm offering these easy terms. And there has to be a balance here because I can sell it for a higher price with less money down, but with less money down, I have more exposure. With more money down, I have more people, less people that can qualify or less people that can get in, but I have less exposure because I have more cash up front. Less chance of the guy bailing on the um, payments every month because he's got a lot of skin in the game. So price versus terms. I can sell it at my price if I offer easy terms. Finding the buyers. How do I find the buyers for these? We put bandit signs out. Now take this down as a huge tip. Everybody in every town has vacant properties that are not listed with agents. Every town has properties that have vacant properties that are boarded up, that are not listed with agents, that are bank owned stick your bandit signs in those yards they'll be there for two years okay just put them back by the flower beds so the guy if he's cutting the grass he doesn't have to deal with your sign that's a golden nugget tip right there here's what you're going to do though on those signs you're going to write houses for sale seller financing in your phone number that's it your seller financing you're creating a note that's why here at Note Camp, it's so great to be able to create notes. There's probably a lot of people on here that might have created notes before. And there's some people on here that's never created notes. You've just bought notes. But this is going to teach you how to create notes. Now, what's going to happen when you've got that sign in that yard? People are going to call you up and say, hey, I'm calling about that property on 123 Elm Street. How much you want for it? Well, what are you going to say to that? You don't own the property. 
Okay. You're just sitting there going, okay, I've got a sign in the yard of a bank owned property. I don't own the property. Well, how do I get out of this? one? Watch this. Here's what you're going to do. Guy calls up and says, Hey, I've seen that property at one, two, three Elm street. You get a sign that says seller financing. How much you want for that property? And what are the terms? Say, hi, my name is Bill. I'm on a cell phone. I'm not in a great area. Let me get your name and number in case we get disconnected so I can call you back. What am I doing? I'm controlling the conversation right now at the beginning of the conversation. I'm not answering questions. I'm telling him I need his information. If he says, well, I don't want to give you my information, I'm going to hang up on him. Okay? Because if he's not willing to give me his information, I'm not willing to have a conversation with the guy. So write that down. Hi, my name is blank. I'm on a cell phone. I'm not in a great area. Let me not. Can I get your number? Let me get your phone number and name in case we get disconnected so I can call you back. Now he gives me his information. I say, okay, what property are you call about? Well, I'm calling about that one on one, two, three Elm street. Well, the investors and I don't know what we're going to do with that property yet. But let me ask you this, to get in one of our properties, we need anywhere from $12,000 down to $35,000 down, depending on what house you buy. So let me ask you, how much money do you have down right now to put down to get into one of our programs with one of our homes? Well, I can come up with about 20,000 bucks. Okay, great, $20,000. And how much can you afford per month? You see what we're doing, guys and gals? We have scripts. You got to learn what to say. Because if you're doing a lot of internet marketing, you're doing a lot of mailings, and you don't know what to say, you might as well stop all of it. Because until you learn what to say and close the deals, you're just throwing money out the window. You might as well be driving down your car throwing $100 bills out the window, because that's what you're doing. Okay, so what we want to do is teach you how to overcome those obstacles to where you can, instead of just fighting to make sixty or 70000 bucks a year, you can do the same amount of work and make three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay, that's all it is. This is where the tire meets the pavement, is knowing how to talk to people, how to handle objections, how to script people, and how to walk them down the path they need to go down so they can make an educated decision on what they need to do. Okay? Structuring the selling end of this deal. The selling price is 225. What's it worth? 210. I took $15,000 down. Out of the 15,000, 5200 made up the back payments. $1,000 went to the homeowner. I made $8,800 on the front end of this deal. I front loaded the deal with $8,800. Now, if I have to paint and carpet the house and it's 8 grand to do that, I only made 800 bucks. Okay? That's going to come out of your front end money if you have to fix the house up. This house was in decent shape. It just needed, honestly, it just needed to be vacuumed, cleaned up a little bit. We painted a couple walls with what we did, but we still made about 8,800 bucks on the front end of this deal. Now we wrapped the mortgage at 8.75%. We make 2% on the balance owed. Okay, $205,000 first at Wells Fargo is at 6.75%. And I charge the new buyer 200. I create a new note of 210,000 at 8.75 percent. I make 340 dollars a month on that. So you've got a first mortgage of 205 that maybe has 20 years left on it. Now you've got this basically second mortgage at 210. So you really have 415 thousand dollars of debt on this property. However, when you're paying these down, this is at 6.75, this is at 8.75. They're coming down like this. The farther down, the more money is in the back end. Okay, you'll have more money in the back end because this paying down is coming down faster. It's less interest and it's a lesser amount of principal balance, unpaid balance. Okay, so. Real simple deal, you're making 340 a month for the next 60 months. So you got a $205,000 Wells Fargo first. You've got basically a second for 210. It's real simple. It's just a mortgage that you create that is all totally in the program here. 
You got every single thing that you need. It takes honestly 10 minutes to do it, to fill it out. Profit on the deal, 8,800 bucks on the front end. We made 20,400 deferred profit. The deferred profit is the 300 back here, the 340, see the $340,000 or $340 per month times 60 months. That's your deferred profit of 20,400. Your back end profit's about 5,000 bucks. So total profit on this negative equity deal was $34,200 that we did. No repairs, no taxes, no insurance. We didn't do a short sale. We just took over a deal that nobody else wanted and made 34,000 bucks. How many of these deals do you have to do in a year to start making four or 5,000 bucks a month in deferred profit? You can do all kinds of these. You don't need many. Okay, and I'm gonna show you all that here coming up. Paperwork that's in this program. You got a sales contract, homeowner agreement, deed for the property, land trust, power of attorney, authorization to release, assignment of beneficial interest. Every single thing, the mortgage, every single thing is in here, okay? Every single thing. Your deed of trust state, I can get you a deed of trust, okay, for your state. Case study number two. This is a student deal. Now, I trained Michael Madison. Michael Madison's in Colorado Springs. He's a 24-year um, retired Air Force colonel. Gets about 8000 bucks a month in... Um, retirement. And I trained him in August of 2016. In September of 2016, he got this deal. Got it on a Monday. He's out door knocking, talking to people behind in payments. And this guy had a modification. He's working with the bank. So Michael said, you know, anybody else are looking to buy or sell any real estate. He says, funny you ask, I have a guy I work with that's moving back to Texas, Wax, Wax, Waxahachie, Texas, okay, north of Waco, south of Dallas, Fort Worth. And he says to him, he says, well, Michael says, cool, can I get his number? He says, no, he says, I'll give you, I'll give him your number. If he's interested, he'll call you. Well, about 45 minutes later, the guy calls him. He said, well, my house worth 220. I owe 220. There's nothing I can do. I've got to leave Friday to get back to Texas. I've got a house in Texas. My family was living in. So I'm just going to move back to my house that I own in Texas. I just don't want to do with this property. So Michael calls me up. He says, Bill, what do I do with this deal? I said, well, go over and meet the guy tonight, which is Monday night. I said, in fact, why don't we do this? Let's do a three-way conversation. So we did. We set up a three-way conversation at seven o'clock Monday night. I told the guy what we we're going to do. The guy said, fine. Michael took all the documents over Tuesday, dropped them off. A uh, guy took them Wednesday, got them signed. Michael went over Wednesday night, picked everything up. He asked the guy, do you mind if I put a sign in the yard? He put a sign in the yard, house is for rent, seller financing, his phone number. Saturday, a guy called and he put the deal together with this guy. Well, now I three-way conversation with him and helped him put the deal together because this is his first deal. But what happened was the guy had to move the next week. Well, this is the third week of September. So the guy moved in by October 1st. So the old owner moved out on Friday and this guy moved in the next weekend after that, a week later, and started making his payments October 1st. Here's the deal. House of North 220, they owed 220, Wells Fargo deal, homeowner wanted zero, homeowners willing to sign anything, Payments behind zero. Fixed interest rate 3.5%. Monthly payment was 1229 PITI. He could sell or finance it for $1,590 to $1,600 a month. Here's what we did. We bought the property for 220. Interest rate 3.5. Homeowner signed over everything. We found the buyers by putting the sign out. Houses for sale, seller financing. Okay, we sold it for 240. It was worth 220. Sold it for 240, $20,000 down. Homeowner got zero. Homeowner was only worried about his credit. That's all he was worried about. Now, Michael Madison is a 24 year 
retired Air Force colonel. Okay, clean shave, clean cut, everything looks like Scott Carson. Okay, kind of guy you look at and go, I can trust him. Okay, so here's the deal. Michael's working with this guy. All he cares about is credit. He doesn't care how long this loan's in his name. He's got a house in Waxahachie. He doesn't need, you know, to, to do anything. He just doesn't want to destroy his credit. So he wrapped the $220,000 mortgage with a $220,000 one at 5.5% with payments of $15.90 a month because the new buyer said, I can afford anything from about $15.50 to like $16.50 a month. So we sent him over to Michael Abendanson, my mortgage lender. My mortgage lender pre-qualified him on income because we can't take the $20,000 from a guy that doesn't have a job. Okay, doesn't have any income because Dodd-Frank won't allow you to do that and that's not the thing to do. So what we want to do is make sure he doesn't have to credit, he doesn't have to qualify credit wise. He just has to qualify that he can afford the property. Okay, and this guy made about 6,000 bucks a month. He had 20 grand down. In fact, what he was, he was a roofing contractor in Colorado Springs. So he had income to show that he makes about six grand a month consistently. Okay. So he had the 20 grand down. Michael just created a note. Profit to him was $20,000 today. Michael did this deal in nine days. He was stunned. He goes, that was so simple. I said, I understand that. You think it was simple because I did all the talking. It was simple. But the thing is, I helped him do this deal. He wouldn't have, he might have got this deal without me, but he would made it a lot easier by having my mentoring and working with me one on one on this deal. Okay, he's also getting $361 a month on the note that he created. Profit on the deal made 20 grand up front. He making $21,660 over the next five years. The back end profit after 60 months with the 220 Wells Fargo loan at three and a half percent payout is 197,333. That's coming up this October. That's his five year point. Okay. When the balance on the 220 at 5.5 is going to be 205,900. So his back end profit is $8,610. Now, total profit on this negative equity deal was $50,270. Before Michael saw these numbers, he said, this is a three-car garage, 2,800 square foot house. It's only four years old. He said, I might move into it. I said, I don't know if you can afford it. He said, Bill, I make over 8,000 bucks a month. I can afford this house. I said, I know you can afford it financially, but let's look at the numbers and see if you can afford it. After he looked at these numbers, he goes, I can't move in this house. There's too much money to be made on this house. Said, That's exactly right. So he did not move into the house. He went ahead and sold it. No Don't repairs. you love that, Bill? Don't you just absolutely love that? That's funny. <laughs> Isn't that, yeah, it is so funny. I know it. It's funny how people, they, you know, you just, you know, what you want to make in life, the money you want to make is outside your comfort zone. It's outside your box. And a lot of people don't understand that. You've got to stretch your box to make two, three, five hundred million dollars a year. You got to do stuff that makes you uncomfortable. And a lot of people don't have the courage to do that. You know, I've got a building in Iowa that I bought for $36,000. It brings in $3,200 a month. And I tried to get some of my family to buy it back there, some nephews and stuff. I said, you're 26 years old. You should buy this building for 36,000 bucks. It brings in $3,200 a month, has four tenants. And they go, oh no, we don't want tenants. You know what problems come with that? I said, how much is your house paying on your house? They go 266 bucks a month because he bought a $50,000 house on a 30 year mortgage. It's 266 bucks a month. I said, okay, you take $36,000, you borrow it from the bank, you buy this property, What's the payment on that? 200 bucks a month. You're making $3,000 a month. Take the $3,000 a month and pay it on your principal, on your personal residence. And within what? 20, 30 months, you have your house paid for. Oh, no, that's too much risk. I'm like, these are the people that will always just make what they make right now because they can't stretch their mind and they just can't take risk. So I'm a big risk taker. You know what? 
we're flipping a whole town up in Iowa called Clinton, Iowa. It's like Hillary Clinton. So it's Clinton, Iowa. And we own 16 properties there downtown. We own about 22% of the downtown and we're bringing the downtown back. And this 2 million bucks I've got invested will turn into 40 million within the next uh, probably seven years. And that's great because it's all an opportunity zone too. So we're excited about that. And I know Scott, you love that kind of stuff too, don't you? Now. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I know you're there. Um, now, here's the thing. We talked about a little bit about at the beginning saying, hey, what if we stretch the note out? What if this guy comes in September to Michael Madison and says, you know, I just can't get you refinanced out now. Can we extend it two years? Well, Michael can say yes or no. If Michael says yes, I would say to Michael, listen, if you're going to extend this out two years, that $8,600 you have in back end profit, tell the guy that you'll extend it out for two years. He can do a $4,000 principal payment for the extension that will come off what he owes. So you get about half of the money that you would have got if he refinanced out. And then you'd extend the note out another two years. If you extend the note out another two years, your deferred goes from 21,000 to 30. Your back end profit goes from 86 to 11.8. Your total profit goes from 50,000 to 62,000. So everybody on this call would extend this out two more years because you're making that 361 a month for another two years. You're making more money in interest. You know, why would you not do that? Hell, I'd send it out as long as he wanted to do it. I'm not worried about that. You know, the eight eight thousand six hundred dollars back in profit. Let's keep that three sixty one a month coming in every single month. <coughs> Excuse me. Long term no equity cash flow. Let's use this for an example. Let's say you get a property under contract. You find a buyer, and you make ten thousand dollars on the front end of the deal. You structure the deal with three hundred fifty dollars a month deferred money. Okay, you buy and sell one per month for the next 60 months. So you buy one and you sell one every month for the next five years. Let's see what happens. Look at month two, month three. See, month six, you've already made $60,000. You did six deals, you made $10,000 a deal on the front end. Your deferred now has gone to $2,100. Look what happens over a year. Month 12, you're making $4,200 a month in deferred money, whether you get out of bed or not. And you made 120,000 bucks by doing 12 deals, making 10 grand up front. So you made $147,300. The 27.3 is all your deferred money added up. 120 is your 12 deals at $10,000 a deal. So you had 150,000 bucks basically your first year. But now look what happens when you go to your second year. Look at your front end money stays the same because you're just doing one deal a month. That's 12,000 or 10, 12 deals at 10,000 bucks each. But look what happens to your deferred money. It goes crazy. $228,000 a year, your last year doing this in deferred money plus 120,000 from doing 12 deals that year. You make $640,000 after five years and $600,000 on the front end. So you make a million two four forty. One million two hundred forty thousand five hundred dollars is what you make by doing just one deal a year for the next five years, buying and selling one. Okay, you don't have to sell them. You can buy and hold if you want, whatever you want to do. There's gonna be more money in buying and selling. However, remember, you have two things in real estate. You have appreciation and cash flow. Appreciation is a hope and a dream. You hope it happens. You dream it happens. If you bought five, six, seven years ago, you're excited as heck with the appreciation. That's how you get super wealthy. However, cash flow is reality. Cash flow is reality. Cash flow is what pays the bills. Okay? Cash flow is what pays the bills. I have a student named John down in Plant City, Florida. Back in 2007, he came to me 2000, late 2006. He goes, Bill, I got 42 houses. He's been with me for 
four and a half years. He's accumulated 42 houses. He says, I've been buying them from 25 to 30,000 bucks. Now they're worth 150 to 160. My buddy over here, who doesn't mentor with me, his buddy over there has 31 houses. And he's buying these houses. He bought them when John was buying his. But what he's doing is refinancing his house, is pulling all the cash out, and he's buying more houses. And John wanted to do that. John says, I want to pull out all the cash out of these houses and buy more houses. I said, John, why are you buying up here? The house is worth 150, 160. I said, those are $60,000 houses. They're so overpriced. I said, the market's going to go like this. It's not going to keep going up 20% a year like it was in 2004, five and six. I said, here's what you do. I said, find how many houses you have to sell to pay the other ones off. Oh my God, I don't really want to sell any houses. I get that, John. But I said, do me a favor. Take a half hour. Look at all your, look at your portfolio. And I said, find out how many houses you have to sell to pay the rest of them off. He said, okay. Calls me back about an hour later. He said, I got to sell six houses to pay the other 36 off. I said, okay, find the six that you need to sell and sell those six now while the market's up here. Take that cash and pay the rest of them off where you have no debt at all. Oh, I really don't want to do that. I said, hey, you're hiring me to tell you what to do and to help you manage your portfolio. So he goes, okay. So he put on the market, they all sold just like this. He pays the 36 off. Now, all of them are section eight. He's making between 950 a month and 1250 a month on 36 houses that are paid for. The market tanks. John's now sitting with 36 houses that are paid for. His buddy, Will, lost all 31 houses, including his primary residence, in the fall. In the downturn of 2007, 8, 9, and 10, Will lost everything. And now he's renting a house from John. He's trying to get back on his feet. He says, I'm never getting back in real estate. John now has 58 properties that are paid for. He had 36, but he's bringing in, he takes about three or four properties, pay for all the maintenance, the management, the, um, you know, the taxes, the insurance and all that. He says he's banking about $30,000 a month, every single month. He said, what do I do with the 30,000? I said, well, how much are these houses? They're about 60. I said, every couple of months buy a house. He goes, okay. So now he's up to 58 houses that are paid for. Do you think John cares if the market goes up or if it goes down? He doesn't care. They're all section eight. He's bringing in $50,000 a month right now. So last month he went out and bought himself a brand new 2021 Corvette. He says, I've got my Corvette from high school. And he goes, I just think I deserve it. He's never been married. He's 65 years old. And he goes, I got nobody to answer to. I got nobody to leave my houses to. He goes, I'm going to enjoy the money while I'm alive. So he went and bought himself a brand new 2021 red Corvette, just a beautiful looking car. And he says, I deserve it. And I said, you do, Johnny. And he goes, I just want to tell you something. He says, I'm glad I'm not in Will's shoes. And he goes, I wanted to go against what you told me. But he goes, I knew in my gut to listen to what you said. And I knew I wanted to buy more houses, but I knew I had to step back and take a breath and let you kind of help me control things. And that was good he did that because if not, he would have lost all his houses and then been starting over again. John now has done 132 houses in his career. He buys, fix, and flips is what he does, but he also keeps, he now, he, uh, here I am down in South Florida. And I call him the other day and I said, hey, John, we're in South Florida. He says to me, he goes, God, I wish I'd come over and see you. But he said, I'm booked up this whole week. He says, I'm teaching Zumba class. I'm like, seriously, dude, you're teaching Zumba? And he goes, I got to have something to do. That's why I meet girls. <laughs> I'm like, okay, knock yourself out, dude. So, so he's making 50 grand a month. He doesn't need to work, but he does it because he enjoys it. So he teaches Zumba class. Okay, I'm going to give you a 30-day challenge here, guys. 30 calls, 30 days, 30,000 bucks. 
Here's a guaranteed way you can make $360,000, a full circle, 360 degrees. Make $30,000 a month for 12 months. That's your 360 degrees, $360,000, okay? Your first year, 30 calls, 30 days, $30,000, blueprinting your business. Okay, here's what you're gonna learn on this 30-day challenge. How to lay out your business, how to track your leads, what type of prospecting will you do? What areas are you gonna to wanna to work? Okay, how to classify those areas and index market those areas. How to do millionaire marketing, how to learn face-to-face -face communication. Everything that I'm talking about right here are all different training calls that you're gonna get. Okay, internet mapping and marketing. You're gonna learn all about bandit signs, dealing with homeowners, dealing with realtors, homeowner options, short sales, wholesaling, selling your LLCs when you do a short sale, okay? And we'll talk a little bit about that, but I'm trying to get through my presentation here so we can take some questions at the end, okay? Closing your short sales in today's market. Also building your buyer's list. And I understand short sales is like, hey, don't talk about short sales. You can't do that in these markets. Trust me, now's the time to learn because they're coming, guys. The wave of foreclosures are coming. Okay, I'm telling you. Building your buyer's list. Okay, investing in yourself and rental roads to riches. So here's what we're doing. We're laying out your business with a blueprint here. So you start out here. You look at the top, it's goals and scheduling. You have prospecting right below. Over to the left, you have areas to work. You got to classify, you got to index, you got to know your market, you got to know what areas to work. Below prospecting, you got foreclosures, you got late leads, you got bankruptcy, you got probate, divorce, tax lien sales, whatever that is, you're going to create a distressed homeowner. Prospecting to the, to the, uh, to the right, you got to learn how to track, you got to learn your numbers. What's your efficiency rating? Are you high, medium, or low efficiency when you're working? See, when you're making phone calls and you're calling people back, you're doing effective lead follow-up, you make two phone calls, you get a nasty phone call, and you go, oh, you know what, I think I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I have to pee. Well, that's low efficiency, okay? Don't worry about what people say, guys and gals. Just make the calls. Get in people's face. Stay in front of the people because here's what happens. You go out and talk to a homeowner in distress, and then you don't follow up. And then three weeks later, you drive by it, and there's a dumpster in the front yard. And you're like, I was working with them. No, you weren't. You had a conversation. You had a conversation, and then somebody else followed up, and they worked with somebody else. So once you find that distressed homeowner right in the middle of your screen, on to the left, is it over the phone? Did you find them over the phone? Did you find them door knocking? Did you find them social media? Was it marketing? that you're doing, your marketing mailings? Was it bandit signs? You know, and all of that stuff, you've got to learn how to pre-qualify your calls. You got to learn how to door knock. You got to learn how to do scripts. I mean, there's so many different ways and aspects of this business to get yourself to a lead. And once you have that lead, is it a buyer lead or a seller lead? You can see it right there. Is it a buyer lead or a seller lead? Okay, we just want to know. Now, once it becomes a lead, the next thing you're gonna have is here's your leads. Are they buyers or are they sellers? If they're buyers, look at there. Are they landlords? Pre-qualify them, find out the area they wanna buy in, what level of rehab they can do. Are they rehabbers? Same thing, are they end users? Okay, are they working with a realtor? If they're not and they need a realtor for some reason, hook them up with your team players. If it's a distressed homeowner, you got to learn your scripts, learn their emotional modes. Are they in denial, anger, depression, embarrassment, acceptance? What's going on? We're going to cover all of this stuff in this 30 day challenge. Now you have homeowner options. Remember we talked about, Hey, we want to give you your 10 options of what you need to buy time to stay in your home. Okay. Here's your 10 options. Loan modification, forbearance agreement, equity, partnering with the homeowner, subject to short sale, bankruptcy, Deed in lieu, selling with a realtor, refinance, do nothing and lose your house. You got to do effective follow up with all of them. The quickest payday is the subject to. See if you notice here, the subject to. 
the quickest payday is to get the document signed, file the docs, sell it, and get paid. That's your quickest payday, guys and gals, right there. Look down here, 85% of people that do a modification, forbearance, bankruptcy, seller refinance, fail. It's all about follow-up. You see all of this follow-up in here. Follow-up, follow-up. Now you're structuring the deal. Once we get the deal structured, what kind of deal is it? We got to negotiate with a homeowner. We got to handle objections. We got to learn our scripts. Is it, a, are we structuring a no equity or a high equity deal? Are we doing a wholesale deal? Are we doing a rehab? See, are we going to be doing a short sale on this deal? If it is, you're going to do the short sale. You're going to negotiate with the bank. You're going to do multiple offers. You're going to get the bank acceptance letter. Then we're going into our exit strategies. See our exit strategies right here. Exit strategies, wholesale, rehab, subject to. But if you notice, there's so many different exit strategies. You wholesale, you get an assignment of contract. You wholesale to a landlord, you wholesale to a rehabber. You don't have to wait the closing to get paid. They can just cut you a check. You can assign the contract over and be done. Juan's going to talk about that tomorrow. If you're going to do a short sale, short sale is not an exit strategy. That's why it's not tied together with the exit strategy sign. A short sale is not an exit strategy. It's how you create equity in a home that has no equity. Okay. Are you going to rehab? If you're going to rehab, are you going to sell it to an end user? That's where you're going to make most of your money. Or are you going to go ahead and put it in your rental portfolio? Okay. You're going to buy in your entity or you're gonna sell in your entity, depending on what you're doing. You're gonna get paid. Here, you're gonna rent it out if you're keeping it for your portfolio. We're taking it subject to, we're using a title company, we're buying in a trust, we're creating a note, we're closing and we're collecting our payments. See, so this is where you get paid, guys and gals, and you make your money on your buy, not on your sell. Okay, let me say that again. You make your money on your buy, not on your sell. It's all about structuring your deal. Now, if you're structuring your short sale, this is five ways to close a short sale. We're going to cover all of this in the 30 day challenge. Okay. How you can structure that. Okay. Now, once you get all this done, you see the bottom, it says investing your money, investing your money. What do you want to do? You can do private lending. I have a lot of students that we have 27 students that make over a million dollars a year every single year. The one, our, our best student makes 5.7 million bucks a year. Okay. You can go ahead and buy notes. Where do we buy and create the notes? You're going to do everything with Scott. Okay. That's where you're going to buy the notes is from Scott. Do your non-disclosures, do your due diligence. It's going to get you financially free. You got to invest in yourself, invest in investors edge university get involved with me working on this 30 day challenge. Same thing here, investing in long-term rentals, whether it's residential, commercial, multi-unit storage units, where are you going to buy? Who's going to manage them? You can invest in precious metals, gold and silver, cryptocurrency, whatever you want to do. Okay. See, we have all of these residential, commercial, multi-unit storage units, all of that stuff. We buy in the Midwest. People tell me all the time, Hey, Bill, I'm thinking about buying two rentals in Seattle. Why? It's six hundred seventy-five thousand dollars in rent for twenty-five hundred. Take the six seventy-five and go buy ten or twelve houses in the Midwest that will bring in you twelve thousand dollars worth of income versus twenty-five hundred. It just makes sense. Okay, it doesn't make sense to buy a house in Denver for a long-term rental at five hundred fifty thousand that rents for twenty-five hundred a month. That makes no sense whatsoever when you can go to the Midwest. My 10 houses that will rent for a thousand bucks a month that you buy for $50,000. I have them all day long, all day long. And I have everything on the ground there. We have management, we have maintenance, we have every single thing on the ground there. Turnkey stuff. Okay. Now, more of what you're going to learn on the 30 days, the homeowner agreement, no equity structuring scripts, contracts, transactional funding, finding deals, buying rentals, door knocking techniques, land trust, okay, homeowner mindsets, dealing with the banks, building your team players, 
seller financing, notes, also long-term. And the notes that we talk about, honestly, when it comes to notes, I force everything right back to Scott because Scott is the note dude, man. I got to tell you what, long-term rentals, proof of funds letters, internet marketing, and handling inbound calls. All of that is covered in the 30-day challenge. Okay, you get workbooks, flowcharts, PowerPoint training calls, one-on-one -on -one coaching, 30 calls, 30 days, 30,000 bucks. How do you get involved? Right here. InvestorsEdgeUniversity.com forward slash 30 days. InvestorsEdgeUniversity.com forward slash 30 days. Okay, this is not part of any of the programs that we have. It's $1,497 one-time payment. Or you can do two payments at $850 now and $850 in 30 days. Now, here's the thing, guys and gals. On this site, InvestorsEdgeUniversity.com forward slash 30 days, it says 1997. That's what we always sell it for. That's why it's on the site for that. But I went in and had my kept person, my infusion soft person, because I don't know how to do it. I said, just leave it on the site for 1997 because that's what we always sell it for. But the order page, change it to 1497, but leave the two payment option in there. And they said, okay, they'll do that. So when you click on Yes, I want to get involved in the 30 day challenge. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go to a page, we put your information, you'll see the price changes to 1497, okay? Now, here's some checks of students. Most of these are their first checks or their first two or three checks. 151,000, 12,000, 78,000, 94,000, 60,000, 18,000. These are all recent checks in the next last couple of years. This one here, uh, Twin Investors, I don't even know how much it is, 42,000. Okay, uh, here's 124,000. This one right here is uh, Tyler Zimmerman's in, in um, uh, Denver. It's his first deal, 124,600. And he said to me, he goes, Bill, I would have never done that deal if it wasn't for you helping me. Here's one here for 47,000. Here's 39. John Geisler, remember John, I was telling you in Plant City, that's John right there. Look at 38,000, these are some of the deals he's done. 39,000, 9,000, 32, 42. Here's one for $300,000, okay? Again, you're gonna get all these modules, guys and gals, and you're gonna be stunned how much information is in here. Each one of the trainings, the 30 trainings, are anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. They're in super detail. This is something you don't want to miss. So go there now. Go there now. InvestorsEdgeUniversity.com forward slash 30 days. Go there now. Make that happen, guys and gals. When you buy this today, you're also going to get these bonuses. Bonus one, the FedUp program, which is the 10 options we give to homeowners to help them solve their problems. It comes in an unlocked Word document so you can put your information in there and print them out yourself and start using them. Bonus two is a fed up training videos. It's me explaining each one of the options in detail for you. And also you can give these links to your homeowners when you're dealing with people in foreclosure and it's me talking to them for you and me saying, get back with my partner who gave you this information. Okay, option or bonus three is the homeowner agreement. This are all the disclosures you need when dealing with homeowners. It helps you control the deal. So there's no misunderstanding. Bonus four, the scripts for prospecting. You'll get every single objection handler, every single script you need, whether you're talking to investors you're talking to landlords you're talking to homeowners in foreclosure homeowners are going through modification whatever it is you're going to be able to talk to them okay because you'll have all the scripts also bonus five the ultimate land trust the ultimate land trust i paid fifty two hundred dollars to have this land trust drawn up it's 997 dollars value i sell it all day long for 997 this is how we transfer the title to the properties. We put them in a land trust. And this comes also with land trust training. So it shows you exactly how to fill it out. 
and I'm available for you guys too. So how do you get involved again? Investors Edge University. It's investors with an S, investorsedgeuniversity.com forward slash 30 days. This is not part of any other program. It's $1,497 one-time payment or two payments of 850 now on 850 in 30 days. And for some reason, if you have any problems whatsoever, that's my email. Email me and say, Bill, I want this program. I want to be part of the 12 people that you're going to work with because I'm only going to work with 12. So I want to be part of the 12 people you're going to work with, but I can't get it to click through because maybe I'm using an older browser or something like that. So take a picture of this page. It's got Bill Twyford, my name at AOL.com. Real easy, just email me there and say, I want to be part of your 12 and um, I'll make sure that you get in. Okay, if you, if you get, if you're going in early. All right, and with that being said, let's take some questions here, Scott. Great stuff as always, Bill, way to knock it out of the park. Uh, Sam asked a question, it's Bill Twyford at AOL.com right there, buddy, if you have any questions. I, I put the link to uh, Bill's offering there in the chat roll there for you. And we got a couple questions here from people. Um, Norman asks, do you pay taxes on deferred payments? Uh, the new homeowner will want to claim the loan on his taxes in the first year. How is that set up? Do you need a CPA involved? What if they ask about the taxes on the property? Well, the taxes on the property, yes, we're paying the taxes on those, but when we're creating a note and selling it, the people that are paying the taxes get to write the taxes off. Yep, exactly. It's done. Uh, let's see here. Question there. Um, is there a monthly fee um, after the uh, the fourteen ninety seven? No, up to no monthly thirty day challenge. No, what they're what they're buying is thirty modules that are going to walk them through all these aspects of everything they need to build the foundation to build a real estate business, whether they're doing foreclosures, they're doing wholesaling, short selling, whatever it is and note buying whatever it is it's and and there's not really much about note buying in there uh, because i just turn that over to you and let you handle right. all that stuff yep. but we talk about creating notes yep i think module 24 25 26 because it's all the subject to how to fill out the mortgage how to do all that because what we do is once we get a property under contract i just run a quick title search and if that's the only thing on title we just go in and, and create the note. We do the deed. We do all that stuff. We file yep. it. We're done. Yep. You know, we we don't go through all the all the normal steps that most people do. Right. Sam asked a question. Do we need a, a lawyer to review the contracts on a state by state basis? Uh, here's here's the thing. I have a contract in here. I never use that contract. I only put it in there because everybody goes, "Hey, do you have a sales contract?" I do, and I even stayed in there. I always say use your state approved real estate agent contract and then go ahead and cross off about 90% of it because you don't need it. You only need eight things when you're doing a, a, a contract and we need the name of the buyer, the name of the seller, you need the address of the property, the legal description, you need the uh, purchase price, you need the earnest money, you need a closing date and maybe just, um, you know, a contingency clause or something. That's it. That's all you need when you're doing a deal. Yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to, to fill it out there. But, but you uh, know, realtors have these 19 page sales <laughs> contracts because that's how they justify. And if you're a realtor, I'm not picking on you because you're not the type of realtor that's out there running the streets right now that don't know what's going on because you're here on the on the note camp. So they're like 19 pages. That's how they justify their commission. Yeah. Bill, I got a question for you. How many of these have you had a do on sale clause called on? None. The only people that worry about do on sale clause are investors. <laughs> Banks don't care about them. And you know what? I tell everybody all the time. I said, if you've got a loan with a bank right now on your house, go down get a cashier's check and put the name of the bank where you're paying it down at the bottom in the memo, put in your account number. Okay. So it would go, go to that account number where it says remitter at the top, put in Donald Duck or Mickey Mouse and see if they apply it to your account. They will. They don't care where it's coming from. As long as they get paid, that's oh, the most want. important thing. And you David asked the question. Scott, that people... which, what's funny, I'm sorry. What's funny, Scott, is you'll get the occasional small local credit union or small local bank that's only in this town. Like we have a little town in Clinton, Iowa. Mm -hmm. The bank there has been in business 1865. 
and it's Clinton National Bank. Now I know that if they know that I, and they all know me there. So when I go there, I'm like the mayor, everybody knows me. You know, you walk down the street, everybody's like, hey Bill, how's it going? See you're in town. You know, it's just like, you feel like Michael Jackson sometimes. So my whole thing is, I know that if they have a loan on that and they know that I buy it, they're gonna do on sale. Right, but most of your major banks, they don't care as no, long as they're getting paid. They don't yeah. care. Yeah, they don't. David, you're, you're, David says that I don't understand what the original bank will do with this. They're, as long as the bank's getting paid, that's the thing. And people that have a mortgage put put transfer property to uh, uh, entities all the time, LLCs, land trusts. That's part of the reason why you're using a land trust in this, correct, Bill? Yeah. Is, yeah. So and they I don't use, care. Yeah, and I use the land trust, but it's, if it's Bob and Mary Smith, I'll just put Smith Family Land Trust. Yeah. And they don't know the difference. And what I did in, uh, it's funny, in Clinton, there's a, 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 what do you call it? There's a, a family up there that's very wealthy. And they're called the McElhaney's. So I put one of my land trusts in McElhaney Family Land Trust. So if somebody slips on the sidewalk, they're not chasing me. They're going after them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we did a, a, a training where I said we were the Panera, Panera Land Trust. In yeah. San Diego, we were looking at a property and they're like, oh, you guys are associated with the Panera Bread Company. Ooh, they've got deep pocket. They totally, instead of asking for proof of funds, they're like, oh, you guys are good. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It's yeah. funny. Oh, um, <laughs> Richard asked a question. What is the most successful marketing you've had for sellers? For me, for sellers? Yeah, for marketing, it, marketing honestly, for sellers. Yeah. I... I like chasing late leads and I like chasing foreclosures. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Right. And you know what? I, like I said, I don't, I, I've never, I, I, I have to say never, I've never really mailed anything because I just, I don't, I, I'm not a guy that sits around and waits. I'm the guy that comes right in and just says, I'm in your face. Let's get this done. Let's get this done. Exactly. Yeah. Um, somebody asked a question. What's the difference, ask the difference between subject to and owner financing. Now what you have to realize is with what Bill's talking here, it's both of those are involved in the same transaction here. Subject to deal, Bill's taking over the mortgage on the property from the borrower who's not making their mortgage payment. That's a subject to deal. It's being deeded over, put in land trust, and then Bill's responsible for the payments. Then he's turning around and owner financing it to a buyer at the higher interest rate, at the higher price. So that's the difference. Subject to is he's taking over existing payments. He's taking over the mortgage on that. The owner financing is then financing it and becoming the bank, making sure that your end buyer who's bringing 10, 20, 50,000 as a down payment can qualify for the existing mortgage owner financing, so. Right, that's exactly right. It's basically two separate transactions with the same house. Exactly, Yeah. exactly. All right, let's see here, got another question here. Or we just answer that, oh, we just covered that. Man, good stuff, Bill. I really, man, appreciate you uh, giving a special offer here for our note campers out there, man. Good yeah, stuff. And, and, and honestly, when I do these, I'll do an all day Saturday where it's six one hour sessions and it's just on the 30 day challenge like this. And it's always 1997. It just, it just is. That's why it says it on there. So, but I dropped it 500 bucks for your guys, guys, because, you know, we love you, man. And, and yeah, we same here, man. hang out, do some stuff together. Yeah, exactly. And, we, you know, we've got some serious students out here who will take action and knock it out of the park as well for you. So, okay. Good stuff. Big plans the rest of Saturday. Gonna go knock on Bill's I'm door. Out, what? Man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go go uh, take off my Robert Graham and uh, and get hang out with my wife. There you go. Well, she is speaking tomorrow, roughly. I think at two o'clock tomorrow. I think or three thirty. Oh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, two. She's at two o'clock time slot tomorrow afternoon on on short sales and stuff. So good she's stuff, good, man. So she'll have the same background that I have. This is our house in Florida, so. <laughs> Great stuff. Well, man, hey, Bill, once again, thank you so much for coming on, man. Great catching up with you. We'll catch up in person at some point soon and share an adult Thanks beverage. Thanks for having me, man. And anything we can do to rock out with your with your note camp people, let us know, man, because we're always here for whatever you guys need. Yeah. You guys have uh, some of the biggest parts in the industry. You just absolutely give and give and give, and that's why we're glad to have you here, buddy. Thanks, man. Thank we'll you. see you later. Yes, anyway. All right, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this session. We're going to take a, a short little break there.